Hey everybody, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, you can contact us on our website at www.lanessafarms.com. Send us an email at customerservice at lanessafarms.com or give us a call or send us a text at the number listed below. Today we are continuing our Livestock Health Series talking about maximizing growth potential in sheep and goats. These videos are made for people just like you based off of the feedback we receive. If you have questions, we have answers. Just contact us. Don't forget to subscribe and hey, we really appreciate those thumbs up. Without further delay, let's get started talking about maximizing growth potential in your sheep and goats. All right, so we've been meaning to make this video for a while and boy, it's just been a busy time of year, but here we are finally going to talk about growth potential in sheep and goats and what's going on. We get lots of questions about this and we just got a message from a good friend of ours, um, Kessia, over at Kessia's Homestead and she wants to know, she says, hey, uh, Lonessa Farms LLC, actually you may be able to help me. I don't know if this is common enough to do a video on. She said, I have a boar buck who is bottle fed. He's healthy, he eats well, he has all his vax, he's worm, zinc, his selenium, alfalfa, free choice minerals, but he's growing so slow and he looks like a kid. The other kid that I have born at the same time is almost twice the size. What is going on? No one seems to know. This is a great question and we get asked this all of the time. Um, things very similar to this. You know, why is one animal growing really well and another one is not growing well at all? Um, are we doing something wrong? Is the animal sick? And, and a lot of times um, it is not one thing it's it's many things put together and we're going to break it down today into three separate categories we're going to talk about the overall health of the animal the feed quality and nutrition of the animal and last but not least we're going to talk about genetics so without further delay let's get started breaking this down so i feel like i may have jumped the gun a little bit talking about the health feed quality nutrition and genetics you know because the very first thing that we need to do is we need to establish where your animal actually is now some of us have been doing this for a long time and we can look at an animal and and get a pretty good idea of where they're standing but at the end of the day the best way to determine the overall quality of the animal carcasses to put your hands on the animal and actually feel them. There's a very easy way that we can determine what the fat covering is on our animal and that's by using a hand method. Um, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second. We're going to go out to the to the barnyard and I'm going to show you how to check these animals for general conditioning. It's not enough to look at this animal and say well they're fat or they're skinny. You can have an animal that has a huge uh, abdomen on them and is emaciated they have you know very little fat cover actually on their body uh, vice versa you can look at an animal that's fully wooled out um, or has a lot of hair and you say wow they look really good and then you shear them or you lay your hands on them and you come to find out that they're nothing but skin and bones so let's take a second before we go much further go out to the barnyard and i will show you how to check the general body condition of your animal so I'm out here in the barn today and I'm making some videos and I almost got up and got ready to leave. I just made a video about worming and I wanted to touch bases with you about body conditioning, uh, general body conditioning, how to tell um, how to tell general fat cover on your animals to tell if they're where they need to be, if they're a little too heavy or if they're a little too light. Now, a lot of this is subject to um, interpretation. However, there's a general way that you can formulate body conditioning uh, by simply using your hand. Now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to feel over the animal's rib cage, and you'll see me do that here in a moment. Um, the old timers would say the best way to tell is by using your hand. Now, if I feel over my fingers, I can feel what that feels like. And in this case, I'm going to pretend that my fingers are my ribs. So if I feel over my fingers and the ribs on the animal feel like that, uh, we're going to generally say that that animal is under conditioned and it needs a little bit more fat cover on it. Now if I feel over the top of my hand, I can still feel the bones, but um, they're a little less defined. This represents an overall good body conditioning. 
not too much fat, not too much just bone, somewhere in the middle. Now if I feel on the top of my forearm here, I can't feel any bones. All I feel is just fat cover, or in my case, you know, muscle and fat cover. But regardless, this represents over conditioning. So again, we're going to say under conditioning, over conditioning, just about right. So in the case where I grab, uh, I'm going to grab a line here. We're gonna grab this guy right here. And so what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about is feeling right here along the ribs. And so when I run my hand along the ribs in this animal, what does it feel like? Does it feel like this? Does it feel like this? Or does it feel like this? In that animal's case, I was getting somewhere in between these two, uh, which represents a pretty good fat covering on the animal. And again, this isn't perfect, um, this isn't, perfect science this is uh, just an easy way for you to tell that maybe that animal could use a little bit more fat cover um, maybe that animal uh, is a little over conditioned so I can tell from looking at this uh, looking at this view right here um, if I had to guess I would say she's probably a little bit over conditioned um, and yeah when I feel when I feel her ribs <laughs> I'm feeling absolutely nothing uh, all I feel is smooth I can barely I can just start to feel her ribs. She may be slightly over conditioned. Um, I've got this view here. Now this view here has a baby on it. And so I can tell by looking at her, she's not emaciated by any means, but see how she looks thinner. Um, so what's going on here is this, the baby's pulling a lot of nutrition out of her. And if I feel her, uh, yeah, she's somewhere in the middle. We're, we're borderline uh, between these two. She's she's had a baby on her now for about a month and a half, and she is definitely um, she's definitely put a lot of her feed uh, conversion into her milk, and that's why she's looking a little bit thinner. Um, but baby will be off of her here soon, and she'll she'll bounce back. So I just wanted to touch bases with you on that talk to you about um, general conditioning scores based off of that. It's an easy way to do it. Obviously, um, there's more to it than that, but that's, that's an overall general good rule. So starting off, we're going to talk about the first factor involved with growing and growth potential in your animals, and that is overall health. Now, this is pretty intuitive, so we're not going to beat this one too much, but general things that you need to think about in regard to your animal is the overall health. Things like does my animal have a worm load? Um, we have videos that show you how to check for worms and how to worm. This is very important. Does the animal have an underlying illness? Um, is the animal stressed? You know, stress has a lot to do with the overall health of the animal and the overall feed conversion ratio of the animal. Just like humans, when we get really, really stressed out, it can cause all kinds of problems like weight gain, weight loss, um, poor overall health, poor overall well-being. So is the animal uh, too hot? Is the animal too cold? Is the animal penned up to where it's not getting any exercise? Is it alone? Does it have other people that it's around? Is it constantly stressed out by loud noises? Um, is it being barked at by dogs, beat up by other animals? overall general things that you want to consider when you're looking at the overall health of your animal. If the animal is not healthy, we're going to get a poor uh, feed conversion ratio. Now I keep talking about this term, feed conversion ratio. What is feed conversion ratio? Feed conversion ratio basically is saying for every uh, unit of food that you're giving this animal, how much um, proper and efficient weight gain are you getting on this animal so that is to say you know in the springtime with our lambs normally when they're really hitting their growth spurt hard they are gaining almost a pound a day so if you're keeping adequate health records which you should be keeping you can look at your animal over a period of time and break that down so for instance if i weigh my animal and then i weigh my animal 10 days later i can take that overall weight gain divide it by 10 and i can see approximately how much weight my animal has been gaining per day now this is really important when it comes to your health records because you 
you can look back at health records and say, okay, uh, this animal was really gaining well at this certain time, this animal was not gaining well, and you can compare and contrast one to the other. You can also pick up on little things like growth spurts and things of that nature. And this is also going to have an important role later on when we start talking about genetics because you're going to find that these animals tend to fall into these little niches to where you're going to know how much weight approximately they're going to gain when they're going to gain it um, and that'll help you for planning things like meeting your market demands and maybe even if you're showing animals meeting uh, show demands so moving on, we're gonna talk about feed quality, nutrition, and most importantly, the feeding method. Now feed quality, it's basically what it sounds like. How good is the feed that you're feeding your animal? What's the protein content? Does it have the proper amount of nutrition? Does it have the right amount of minerals in it? And then we get into things like hay. Um, as you know from our video where we talk about hay, the animals, um, sheep and goats, to keep a good room and health, they absolutely have to have hay. And they always have to have fresh water. So our protein percentage, when we're trying to really grow out an animal and push them hard, we're probably going to be somewhere between 16 and 20% protein. Our hay, we want nice green, uh, no mold. Uh, hay for the animal to keep the good room and health and if you're not giving them a feed that already has the minerals in it you want to make sure that you find a good mineral base for your specific breed of animal keeping in mind things that may hurt the animal such as goats need copper sheep can't have copper because it's bad for them and as we stated and I can't state it enough you absolutely have to have good water now where do people mess up here well a lot of times people will mess up in their hay to grain ratio they're going to feed lots and lots of hay and very little grain and what you'll find with that is is the hay is going to fill the animal up um, it's going to give them a great big belly but it's not really going to add a whole lot of quality um, conditioning to the animal you in most cases would be better off flipping that and feeding a little bit of hay and a lot of grain if you're really trying to push the growth rate of your animal. Um, remember, you have to feed the hay. If you don't, you'll destroy the animal's rumen and then you run into all kinds of trouble. But if you're really trying to push your animal, if you're really trying to get them to grow, we want to lean more towards um, high grain and less hay. That hay is just a filler. If you're giving them too much hay, um, they're going to be full, they're not going to eat as much grain, and you're not really going to get a whole lot out of it. You're not going to get nearly as much bang for your buck. Now, feeding method. How are you feeding your animals? Um, a lot of people tend to find that when they feed everybody in mass, their big animals stay big and their little animals stay little and the reason for this is really intuitive when you think about it because the big animals are going to eat much more much faster and they're going to bully the smaller animals out of the way your small animals are not going to get a chance to get as much feed your big animals are going to get the lion's share and therefore your bigs are going to stay big and your littles are going to stay little as you can see here there's ways around that and that is feed animals individually set up some kind of pen system to where they can get um, individualized controlled amounts of feed now when it comes to hay you know you can probably use a big bunk feeder and they can all share and you'll be fine but when it comes to grain you have to be really 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 careful and limit how much each individual animal is getting if you really want to get control of the growth potential of your animals we hand feed our animals we separate them out we give them each their own amount of grain and i know some of you are thinking this is nuts and there is no way that i can do that and i'm not telling you to do that with every animal but if you're picking out your favorites if you're picking out something you're going to show if you're picking out maybe a, a new replacement ram or a new replacement you that you really think has a lot of potential this is absolutely the way that you need to go you need to single them out feed them individually and i think you'll notice a big big difference when it comes to the growth and the feed conversion ratio that you notice another thing that i want to talk about is babies that are nursing 
you have to keep an eye on the babies that you have and the way that they're nursing because what you may have already noticed is babies will steal milk off of other moms so if you've got a mom with brand new babies in a pen with a mom that has babies that are five to six weeks old you may find those five and six week old are running over bumping smaller babies out of the way and actually nursing on moms that are not their mother and stealing milk you need to keep aggressive lambs separated from the newer lambs otherwise that it can be detrimental they can buffalo babies out of the way steal milk off of moms and cause all kinds of problems last but not least let's talk about genetics now at the end of the day if you've got a healthy animal you're giving them good quality feed you're feeding them the correct way you are still at a disadvantage if you have bad genetics you are at the mercy of the genetic profile of your animal this can be the breed of your animal this can be the genetics that they're getting from mom and dad certain animals have better genetic profiles than others if you go out and spend a little bit of money and you buy a junk animal that has bad genetics you can feed them and feed them and feed them and at the end of the day uh, you can only add so much to that animal the way that that animal is built structurally uh, you can't feed an animal uh, to a first place ribbon unfortunately it just does not work that way so you may have a dairy goat um, like these little guys that you saw here in the picture they're La Manchas they are never going to get as big as a boar goat um, you look at other pictures that we have here like uh, the south down um, lamb that you have pictured here this guy is only six months old uh, and you can see how well he's built that's genetics um, you look at like this lamb here this lamb is only a few days old and you can see the way that this lamb is put together again this is genetics there is only so much that you can do given the hand that you're dealt. Now, you can have an animal that tends to grow a little bit slower, but they're put together correct, and in the end, they're gonna be okay. You can have an animal that grows really, really fast, but they are just not put together correctly. And, and that's where you're gonna really have to decide, okay, how much money do I wanna spend? Um, what kind of livestock do I wanna breed? Because, unfortunately and i know it's unpopular uh, and it's a hard pill to swallow but the better quality animals that you get generally generally equates to more money spent but in the end um, when we're talking about that feed conversion ratio the better quality animals that you get the, the better off you're going to end up um, and i know that may be unpopular but that's just the truth of the matter I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching this video today as much as we enjoyed making it for you. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe now to get more out of our videos each and every day. Check us out on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. We are there. We are here to answer your questions. If you have questions, ask and we will make a video just for you. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.